afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkwitz, and I am excited to talk to you about concrete. And today we're going to talk about alkali silica reactivity and whether or not we can predict it. Right? Is that what we're supposed to? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to exactly. look at the notes. Exactly. Don't look at the notes! There it's it is. Okay. There. So, um, you know, we've done a lot of videos explaining alkali silica reactivity, and I remember uh, years ago we wrote an article for Concrete International, and one of the guest editors uh, refused to allow the publication of our article if we didn't take out a specific sentence, which alluded to alkali silica reactivity uh, becoming the leading mechanism for uh, premature concrete failure or one of the leading mechanisms, primary mechanism. I can't remember the exact words. And, you know, once we took out that statement, um, that, that guest editor was, was okay with the article. And what that guest editor was alluding to is that ASR is not that much of a problem. It is not the primary mechanism of any type of concrete premature failure. It's normally a, a mechanism that leads to the primary me mechanism. Um, and I, I think since we published that article, that has changed because there are a lot of structures out there that have failed due to alkali silica reactivity, that being the primary mechanism. So I, I won't go into, I won't belabor you with the histrionics of it. Uh, there are some links below that Haley's going to post that will give you a little bit more collateral, some detail into ASR and you know other discussions that we've had on it. Uh, but today we're going to talk about predicting ASR and can we know if it's going to happen uh, before we get our concrete out to the job site, gray, sh gray concrete down the chutes into the forms, and we're hoping, hoping and praying that that ASR isn't going to happen. The answer is yes. There are a multitude of methods to elucidate whether or not you're going to have problems. Some methods are faster than others, some methods are better than others. I always recommend using a plethora, a wide variety of methods, especially uh, when you get to those bigger, more expensive, more permanent projects. I mean, when we're dealing with concrete, almost all of our projects are permanent, but the larger the structure, the more time and effort and money you want to put into answering that question, you know, whether or not ASR is going to happen. And the first thing is, is looking at your raw materials. Not only the historic use of the raw materials, have they ever been placed before, especially long periods of time, in aggressive environments, and what do those structures look like? Have they been in place for 20 years? Or have they been in place for two months, and what type of damage have they shown? Um, that will give you a lot of information there. Talk, talking to the local engineers, especially the folks who uh, end up getting sued, if things go wrong is, you know, if you have that in your back pocket, definitely use it. But also using the ASTMs and CSAs that are out there uh, to help you identify, you know, with the chemistry, knowing the chemistry, the mill certificates, the uh, type of aggregate you have, and using these ASTMs and CSAs just bookcrete wide, not not really going into the the labcrete version, but looking at the sodium equivalent content, the type of aggregate will lead you to understand whether or not there is a potential for alkali silica reactivity with your aggregate and the hydrated cementitious combination. After that, it's testing. Now, a, a lot of different states and municipalities, a lot of different countries require many different things. I, I can easily um, you, you know, explain it into either short-term tests or long-term tests. Short-term tests can either be 72 hours long, up to 28 days long, and then your long-term tests can be up to 18 months long. Uh, and then you can go even further by putting blocks on Treat Island where you have these aggressive uh, cycles of water coming in and out on this pier and, and it just sets up an environment for failure. And that can even take longer, more than three years or more than 18 months, but years upon years. So, um, you know, normally what we use is the shorter term test. We like to focus on ASTMC 1260, 1567, these mortar bar expansion tests. Or you can use a British standard, which is an ASL, ASR gel pat that helps you look at the amount of polymerized gel and the type of gel that has been polymerized based on the change of your aggregate and your constituents. And I mean, really when it comes down to it, for predicting good concrete practices dictate, um, I don't care if you're looking at ACI, ASTMs, or something over the big blue pond, 
those good concrete practices dictate that we try out the mixes and test them before we go out to the field. So when it comes down to it, the best type of predictive tool is the accelerated experiments that we can run in our controlled environments. And then from there, if you can place a small section out in the field, but that, I mean, that's not really practical, realistic. Hey, if you could do it, great, but it's rare that I see that. Um, so anyway, hopefully you learned something. Let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Stay tuned for some more information on colloidal silica and ASR. I did that specifically to mess Haley up. But anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications.